Welcome everybody. Hello, my name is Tiffany. I am the Tipsy Artist and today we are painting a beautiful camper. So I'm going to show you my inspiration. I've done this a lot. Campers are very popular with all the glamping and everything. Uh, this is one I did for family. It's got cute little flamingos in there. And then I've done another one for Valentine's Day. Better together. Pretty fun. All right, and then we have this available on our website, tipsyartist.com. This is with our digital downloadable templates. So we've done an example here for you with cardstock. What it looks like for y'all, this just prints right off of your computer. So it is a beautiful thing and all you have to do is just download it and then it just prints right off on regular, uh, just regular copy paper. And then you're able to just easily cut all around that shape there. These are here as a reference. You can cut those out if you want to, not necessary. Um, but we do recommend a harder cardstock paper. It does make the cutting process a little bit easier for you. Uh, so that's what it looks like in the beginning stages. Then this is formatted to fit an 11 by 14 canvas, which I have shown here. And then I just trace it all out. I love using a Sharpie. Um, it really helps give those uh, firm black lines to start with as a great base before we get started with our painting. So I've got mine all traced out, ready to go. Also, handy tools, let's go ahead and talk about those. Uh, we have our wine nearby, Tipsy Artist Wine, woo! All right, and then let's talk about brushes. All right, so I have my little family of brushes here, and I got Big Daddy, and then I have Mama, and then I have two sweet little kiddos, little buddy, little bit. So I'll be referencing all these guys all throughout the painting class. And then we have a bucket of water to give them a bath. And then we have just like a little rag or paper towels work just fine. And then we've got all your paint. And all the supplies that I use are always listed in my description down below, so be sure and see that down below. And so I just use basic student acrylic paint. Really easy to use, very fluid, uh, very affordable. So, I, and again, I have the supply list down below too on that. Lots of different colors already set out here. And you're always welcome to be creative and do your own thing, or you can follow me exactly as I have it all kind of lined out here. All right, so, oh, also one more thing, plates. Um, I just use basic styrofoam plates to go ahead and mix on. I go through a lot of these, and so just have a lot of these handy nearby. So these are going to be our mixing plates. I'm also known uh, as a palette, uh, but yeah, that's, that's all you need, just little simple plates there. All right, then, let's see, let's go ahead and get started first step on this, again, all my classes are designed to be very, very easy, um, more about feeling good and just having a nice relaxing experience. That's the primary goal. And so I, again, I have one rule and that is just to relax and have fun, relax, relax, relax and succeed. Just relax and have fun. All right. So that's the main goal. That's all you have to really worry about. Even if your painting doesn't turn out exactly as you would have hoped, uh, sometimes that happens. The great news about acrylic, you can keep reworking it, but also it's more important about how you feel that you have a nice, uplifting, relaxing experience as well, because that's the main goal here. All right, so I'm going to get started by doing background color first. I like to get started with that, and I'm also going to get started with my Big Daddy brush. So this is Big Daddy. This is the biggest brush that you've got. And then we're going to start to mix up these awesome colors here. All right, so I am going to start with cobalt blue. So I'm going to have this here ready to go. And then I've got my just emerald green. And then a titanium white. All right, so I've got all three of those colors. All right, so again, we have, let's go over that one more time. Cobalt blue, green, and white. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Big Daddy brush, and I just use a, a dry brush. I don't add any water to the paint. That is because I'm using a student grade acrylic paint, 
If this were a real heavy body, more professional, more expensive uh, grade of acrylic paint, I would say you might have to use a little bit of water, but not for what we're doing here. So I'm going to take a dry brush, and I'm going to go ahead and pick up a nice big dollop of white, nice big dollop of blue, and nice big dollop of green. So it's about three equal parts uh, for all these colors. That gives you a nice true turquoise right in the middle. I'm going to mix all of these together. Again, white, blue, and green. Alright, so I've got a really nice mix here of my turquoise. Very pretty right there in the middle. Alright, and then when I start to go ahead and paint this on, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just start to paint this onto my background. Now, the really cool thing about turquoise is it has great coverage. So, you don't have to worry too much about how you hold the brush. There's no tricks to it, really. It just has really great coverage, so you can kind of be relaxed in how you hold the brush. And most of the time, you just hold it just kind of like you'd hold a pencil. And that'll give you a nice, nice texture and coat on there. Now, the other thing that I like to do is I like to always make sure I've got some pure white nearby. I'll be constantly kind of dipping into that white and be pushing that through into the background. And then that will give you really good coverage over the surface. Now, if for some reason you do start to run into some transparency, uh, maybe because you don't have enough paint on your brush, that's the first thing. Um, the other thing is you may really have to concentrate on how you hold the brush. Sometimes beginners do get a little bit thin and they start to see, you know, dry canvas behind there. So what you want to do, hold that handle out to the side, just like that. This forces you to have more of a light, gentle hand, allows more of that paint to actually rest right on the canvas. So that's a nice little tip there, just in the event that you do happen to run into some transparency. Now as we start to get near this camper, we're going to have to start to do some cut-in work. And that's when you really do want to change how you hold the brush. Hold it more like you'd hold a pencil. And then this will give you a nice thin line edge like that. That helps give you a lot more control. So let me show you here on a plate. So if you hold it like a pencil, see how there's a thin line. Show you that again. Thin line, okay? You hold it out to the side, then you get thick lines. So keep that in mind as you're trying to position and get in there into some smaller areas. Hold it like a pencil. This gives you more control. Thin line as you start to do your cut-in work here. And then when you work into that outside, remember to turn it over to the side. And then that helps you work into that larger area. And then if you have a really small area to work into, then I recommend Little Buddy brush. Little Buddy is a great tool. Sometimes even a little bit is a great tool. Your kiddos really come in handy and they help you work into those smaller areas in there. And then I have to also remember to put on my reading glasses when I do that. I'm stubborn and I don't like to wear them and I'm always losing them, but I think I have them in my hand now. I'm really dirty. All right, so here we go. I'm going to clean these off. these on and that's going to help me do my little I think I work around there. All right. Awesome. All right, so I've got little buddy and I'm going to start to work into this smaller area that cuts in around this cute little camper. Now you just want to use Little Buddy to do the cut-in work. You don't want to start to paint with Little Buddy because it will drive you insane, first of all. 
doesn't have good coverage, you're going to see a lot of brush work and it'll be really hard on you. It's not very relaxing to do a lot of large scale work with a little buddy brush. So just do the cutting work with your little buddy brush. See, we're all good now. Then I'm going to come back to my larger area in here. So I've got my big daddy brush. work into this background. And I'm going to take this blue color all the way down to the ground level. It just it provides a really nice foundation. You can leave it just the way it is if you want to. Or we'll probably do some pretty fun optional grass that comes in over the top too. But no matter what, it just provides a really nice base underneath it all here. Nice foundation. So I'll go ahead and work this all the way in all the way around that camper. washing out my brush right now. Let's go ahead and talk about that a little bit. So when we do go to wash out our brushes, um, you do want to go ahead and put the water, not the water, sorry, brush. There we go. All right. You do want to go ahead and put the brush all the way in the water. Press down pretty firmly. Uh, that will uh, give it a nice clean tension. And then I am going to just swish my brush all the way around. And that ding, 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 that's my beautiful Isla coming down the stairs. It's my puppy dog. She's setting off the alarm, so that way we know where she's at all the time. And I'm discovering something about my phone that even though I had it, she is trying to go through the doggy door, which my camera's in right in the way, and I hope that. <sighs> that made me a little nervous. All right. So, okay. Now I just got to make sure she comes back in and doesn't knock the whole camera over, so that could be awkward. All right. Um, next step here for our lovely little camper is that we're going to go ahead and start to paint in the solid shapes here. And so, um, let's see. I am going to do... Just trying to think. I change my mind a lot, but I'm going to go ahead and do a red door. I love a red door. Always have. It's actually a symbol of prosperity, which is pretty cool. So, and we all want a prosperous door on our camper. I mean, you know, that's goes without saying. All right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some red here on my mixing plate. Isn't that a lovely sound? It sure is. All right, and then. Um, Mama Brush is actually a pretty awesome tool for this size in here. So this is Mama, this is Mama Brush right here. And red. So let's talk about red a little bit. It's so pretty and wonderful, however, it always has a tendency to be a little bit transparent. And um, I'll just show you on the plate. So when you start to paint with it, it kind of drives you nuts because it goes it becomes very transparent, almost looks hot pink. You see a lot of your brush strokes happening in here. And so what we've got to do is we have to first make sure you get your brush all loaded up. And then you want to make sure, and this is when it's really important to hold the brush a certain way. So we hold the brush over to the side, and this will give us that light, gentle hand and allows more paint to actually just rest right on the surface there. So when you First, put on your first coat. I mean, it's okay to relax a little bit and go ahead and, and not worry too much about the brush strokes. And just go ahead and get that paint in there in that shape. Just 
just think more about getting into the lines and getting that line work done in that area. Concentrate on that first and don't really concern yourself too much with how it's becoming transparent and the, and the brushwork that you're seeing happening because that's just going to happen. Because we do need to go ahead and hold the brush like this to have the control that we need to work our way around those lines. And once I get that initial coat in place, then I'll start to turn my attention more to coverage and getting good coverage over the surface. All right, so now I'm seeing a lot of transparency. That's okay, I can come back in with a little bit of a second coat now. Mama, good layer of paint on the flat side of the brush. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn this brush over to the side. And this will help me have really good coverage over the surface. Kind of turn it the other direction to work in from the other side. It'll help you have a little bit more control. And sometimes people just come back in and give this several coats. They'll let it set up and dry, come back later, another coat, set up and dry, that kind of thing. And that's another way to go about doing it too, in case you just don't want to work real heavy and have to give it too much thought. Coming back in for more coats is always an option. All right, so that's my really pretty little prosperity door there. It's awesome. It's going to bring in the riches. That's what's going to make it all happen right there. I can feel it. Can you? Yeah, that's what's happening. All right. So now we can do some other colors on our little camper here. And I am feeling, I'm feeling a little bit of some turquoise happening in here. I think that's really fun. I love the contrast of the turquoise and red camper, but I don't want it to be near the edges of my skyline since that's a little bit too much turquoise and turquoise happening. So I am going to take my little buddy brush here and I'm going to work into that turquoise color. So again, little buddy just as a little recap here. He's the oldest of the two kiddos. He's got a little flat top. He's, he's awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and push into that turquoise that we already have mixed up. And just as a reminder, turquoise as a mix, you need to remix this again. It's about three equal parts, white, blue, and green. Alright, so we've got our turquoise. I'm going to go ahead and push right into this little section here. Again, first strokes on this are just doing a little bit more thought in terms of precision with just getting into the lines. I like to call my painting coloring book painting because it's just more about the simplicity of that and working into those spaces without really hardly any thought. So keeping it simple. Very childlike, very fun. So this little section in here. And then if you need to come back over it for a second coat, certainly can do that. If you see some transparency, then just kind of work it in over the surface there to get good coverage. section here just for fun. I'm going to do this little section right in here. I'm going to go ahead and do this turquoise.
awesome. So we have some details in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and do some of the black work now on the tire. And this little thingy bobby. I'm not a camping expert. My parents are. I should know. They would know. They would know what this is called. That whole thing right there. Yeah. Somebody will tell me in the comments. Somebody help me out. Alright, so let's see. Let's get some black. It's pure black paint going here. And then this is starting to get into some of that smaller area for me, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my superhero glasses here. All right. and, uh, I've got my little buddy brush going, oldest of the two kiddos, little flat top, great guy. He's going to help us, and we're going to go ahead and start to paint into this little wheel right here. All right, so let me talk a little bit about this little stroke in here. Um, so there's a couple of things you can do. If that kind of precision work just really scares you, there's also a beautiful thing called a paint pen or a Sharpie, and I'll have that in my supply list as well. But you can always do some of that harder precision work around the edges with a tool like this. And then it, you know, it gives you a nice little cheat, and then you can start to work into it with a bigger brush and just meet yourself right there at the edge to where you're not having to be so precise. And especially if you're one of those people that some people, I know a lot of people in my classes struggle with that um, shaky hand thing. And they still love to paint because they love the therapeutic feel of it. Um, but they can, you can get a, a pretty good line with a Sharpie with much greater ease first and then come back in with your brush and work into it. The other thing I'll tell you about that is if you do happen to have that going on, I would say just run with it too. That's the other thing I tell them because if the shakiness is so dramatic that it's almost just overpowering with your entire style, then just go with it. So, because this thing, this, this is a style all on its own to be this kind of uh, precise in the lines. But there's also a different style that could be very expressionistic. And so if you just have that shakiness to where it looked almost as if every line were blurred, uh, that can actually take on a really cool, abstracted, um, expressionistic feel to it. And I just think you should just go with it, have fun with it, and just let all your lines be blurred and just have fun. Because again, it's more important to just have fun with the process and relax. So if you're finding that you're, you know, grinding and getting really uptight about the lines, when maybe you have a shaky hand or the straightness of that is just not your thing, then just relax with it and then just let yourself be kind of free with those lines and just ignore them and have fun and get as close as you can and go on. All right, so superhero glasses again, just a second. Here we go. I'm walking into this. Quite tired, y'all. It's, like it's not a front tire, I don't know why I said that. Well, again, as we all know, I don't know what it is, but it's front perch. to do some little roses and flags I think I think that'd be pretty fun and 
You can do a Sharpie, you can paint it on, that's up to you. Um, I think personally it's a little bit easier to start with a Sharpie first. And you do want to make sure that you don't let your Sharpie hit wet paint. Um, because it will immediately just ruin your Sharpie. So as you kind of maybe go back and forth with the use of Sharpie and paint, just make sure that any anytime you've got your Sharpie that it's going on or around dry paint. I'm being a little bit risky here. I know I still have some wet paint here in the background, but I'm gonna come in over the top of my white. Uh, one thing that's kind of cool is that this canvas, Awesome. My dog just came through the garden door. That's me. And uh, she is so graceful. She's so lovely. She just completely went around the camera. Anyway, I'm so happy right now. All right. Uh, so back to the whole Sharpie and um, yes. Okay, white. That's where I was. White on your background. All right. So you can let the white of your canvas actually be your white. Uh, the whole canvas is always painted and primed white. So that's a beautiful thing. So you can just always let that be just the way it is. It's awesome. All right, so I'm gonna come back in with my little Sharpie here and I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, some of those little drapey lines. Kinda like, do y'all see what I have going on here with my uh, lights? I'll talk about this for a second. So um, I have this beautiful light thing going on that I just had to have with my whole camping scene. And actually it may stay forever, but I just really like it. And this was very painful for my husband to watch because he doesn't do anything like this. It's not the lights that he has a problem with. It's the way that I did the lights. It's the way that I just looped them all over this curtain rod and, you know, sort of half-assed did it. See, there's nothing in his world that's half-assed. And so he's kind of having to take a deep breath through this video and not cry when he watches this whole thing happening in the background. So, love you babe. He also does my editing, so he's over here behind the scenes, you know, like crying as he's having to watch this sort of the whole thing. But anyway, so it's kind of funny. That's just the difference between some of our loving little things that we do in marriage and I do this to drive him nuts and, and then uh, he comes along and he fixes it and does it right, so. Probably what you'll see in future videos is just looking like it's super amazing and he'll do something awesome with it. But for right now, I'm the one that did this, so I take full credit. All right, so uh, back to my cute little string thing. Speaking of that, that's kind of what I have going on here. So I'm gonna do a little thing like that. That shape kind of feels like when you make a little happy face. Okay, and I'm gonna do another one like this. And I'm gonna do another one. Okay, that's super fun. And then I'm gonna do these little uh, triangles, like the little flags that hang down, because that's just real easy. So I'll kind of do those hanging from that line. And let's just do a couple more here. All right, isn't that fun? All right, so we have some of those. And then I may add some little roses in here too. That'll be fun too. And then um, we're gonna start to paint in our lovely little flags here. And I think it'll be fun to do some different colors. That way it'll give me the opportunity to teach you how to mix a little bit and then give you some options back here. Make it a little bit, you know, kind of bright and colorful. It's like we're having a little party. All right, so let's do some pink. All right, so I'm going to take a, let's see, oh, by the way, Good Mixing Brushes, Little Buddy's pretty awesome. Any of our flats, Little Buddy, Mama, Big Daddy, those are all really good mixing brushes. And I'm gonna take a dollop of the red, and then I'm going to take a dollop of some white, mix those two together, and that will give me a really awesome pink. Now, here's what's amazing. You can take a little bit more red in that mix. That makes it more hot pink. You take a lot more white, and that makes it a lot more of that really pretty light baby pink. So you, there's lots of different directions that you can go there, okay? Oh, also, here's what's fun. Uh, 
Let's add a little bit of orange to this because coral is big time trending right now. All right, so I'm gonna add just a touch of orange. Mix that in. And that gives us a really fabulous coral color too. Right, that's awesome. And let's do some purple, purple color. All right, so we got purple, comes right out of the tube, isn't that awesome? You can mix that purple if you want. Um, for this, I'm gonna prefer the just bright out of the you know bottle purple. If you mix it up, just know the difference is that it's quite a bit cooler when you mix, at least with the paints I'm using. So I'm doing a little dollop of red, little dollop of blue. Went just like a sick on you on that one, went backwards. Anyway, red and blue, red and blue, that mixed together, that makes purple, all right? So if you are, don't have any purple and you're having to mix it up, go red and blue. But you can see how it is quite a bit more subdued and not quite as bright. And then even if you try to add more red to light it up, it just almost uh, takes it to a completely different shade, almost like a magenta. Uh, so, Purple if you've got it, and also what's fun with purple, you can add a little bit of white. Okay, that can make this incredible lavender color, really extraordinary. All right, so now we've got lots of fun options there for our brights. And then let's do some spring green. All right, so spring green is going to be a dollop of the green and then a dollop of the white. All right, dollop of green, dollop of white. Let's mix those together. All right, really pretty light spring green color. Now, if you add a lemon yellow to this, that's quite dynamite too. Lovely. Let's get some of that going. All right, so that makes a really pretty color. A little more lime if you do the bright, bright lemon yellow on there. Okay, so let's see what else, what else. Um, you know, another option here would be just gold. That's a nice, it's not quite as bright, but it's just a, a nice uh, mix. I use this a lot in all my paintings. Lots of gold. And so let's take a look at what that looks like. So there's my gold right there, okay? Now, gold can be very transparent, so I like to always add just a teeny amount of white to that. It doesn't change the color that much, but it sure does make it easier to paint with. So it gives it a much more opaque quality on the canvas, so that is awesome. All right, so now we have a lot of really sweet options here. We can do lots of creative colors in our little flag. And our flag is pretty tiny. We're starting to get into the tiny areas. And so I will probably switch over to a little bit brush. Little bit little is little bit is um, little. <laughs> oh, that was awesome, wasn't it? Um, thank you, Tipsy Artist, for saying that. That really uh, helped us out there. Okay, so when you start to paint with little bit, you will want to uh, get a, as fine of a point as possible. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit and I am going to kind of twist here into the paint. Twist it between my fingertips that rotates the head of the brush into the paint. What that does is it really helps kind of twist it into a nice fine point. So that'll be very helpful. It helps give you a lot more control when you're starting to work into those smaller areas. And once again, I'm working into a smaller area here on the canvas, so put on my little superhero glasses, and I'm going to start to work into these smaller areas here. So again, just hold it like a pencil. And then I just want to keep it fresh with different colors coming through, so 
I kind of pay attention to what colors look good next to other colors. So next to purple, I'm thinking lime green would be pretty awesome. That's a really good complimentary color right next to the purple. So I'm going to go ahead and come in with that lime green. And then right after that, I think the, let's do that pretty coral color. That'll be awesome. Let's do that coral color. And then I'm going to switch back to the purple. No, I'm not. Change my mind. Oh, no, I can do that. Let me try it. Okay, you want purple right there on the side. Let's do the gold. Let's do the gold. This is a good time for gold. Gold looks great next to pink. So we're going to go ahead and work that in. And I think I've got my four colors now. Alright, so now... Oops. Alright, now I'm going to go back to the purple. Some few little areas that looks like Tipsy had too much wine or something before she painted. So there's a couple of different things you can do. Um, you are going to do a little bit of cleanup work. A uh, little tidbit is to take just a tiny amount of water, and while the paint's still really fresh, you can actually just take it. It just lifts right off. And then it also helps to kind of turn it a little bit because you don't want the water running. All right, then I'm going to come back in with my dry brush and finish my cleanup there. do my little red tail light right here. Let's do that little action. Little bit brush, just pure red. And all right, let's do some roses just for fun. Okay, and I'm going to put my roses right here, I think, on top of that little section in there. Now, the cool thing about roses is that they can just start out as what appear to almost look like lumpy circles. So, to me, they are just super, super easy. And I am going to give you a couple of different techniques for flowers to do. I get feedback from people that some people are loving the roses. It just flows really easily for them. 
Other people, not so much. They're really struggling with some of the roses. So I'm gonna give you an idea for more of a pounce effect flower, which almost looks like a hydrangea. And that works for everybody every time and both of them always start off with that basic shape of like a lumpy circle and then depending on which technique that you like to do uh, then you can play with both those you can do either the rose technique or you can do that look that kind of looks like the hydrangea coming out and the cool thing about the hydrangea look is that it can either be um, well like the traditional one that we mostly are familiar with which is the periwinkles and the lavenders and the blues um, you can certainly go that route um, or you can just take that same technique and you can go with any color you like, like a bright yellow or a bright pink. It still looks like just a, a big ball of a beautiful flower, so the, it all works. All right, so I'm gonna start with a little circle here and I'm gonna go with a dark hot pink. So I've got uh, some red to start with. I'm going to add a little bit of white. Mix those two together. Oh, and by the way, this is Mama, Mama Brush here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just do this big circle here in the center. It doesn't look like much now, but it will. Okay, now I'm gonna do little lavender lumpy balls on the other side. That sounded terrible, but I promise it's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> You're like, when can two lumpy balls be beautiful? Well, I'm about to show you that it's gonna happen. Okay, take a deep breath after that, okay. So we need uh, some purple and some white. Our little circles. Okay, lumpy balls, ladies. So awesome. Or gents, if you're out there painting lumpy balls with me, hey, yeah, there's no judgment here. All right, uh, little lavender lumpy balls. So cute. Okay, so now we're going to start to do some of this fun technique that comes in over the top. All right. And I'm going to start with roses first. So we're going to come in with our little bit brush and the horse in here. All right. So here's the cool thing about roses. Real easy, awesome technique. I am going to come in with my little bit brush, and the first step will be to come in with one shade lighter. One shade lighter. All right. So I'm going to come in with a much lighter. Pink. So again, it is that red and then a little bit of white. Okay, and I want it to be contrasting compared to what we already have. So this is a dark hot pink. I definitely want to have that really light pink here. And a little bit brush, so I'm going to do that quick little twist between the fingertips here rotates it into a nice fine point. All right, and then I'm going to do, the stroke will basically look like half circle, or think of it like parentheses, oh, or parentheses, parentheses, half circle. That's the basic stroke of it, but I'm gonna take that all the way around the rows, okay? And as I do this, I'll work my way in towards the center. So, and then just kind of all the way around to just kind of keep working those little half circles. All right, so that's my first step for that rose. Next step will just be a pure white. So easy, no mixing. Your white paint, little bit brush, and we're gonna just do that same stroke. Little half circles, 
Okay, and then just keep working them all the way around in a circular pattern until we come in towards the center of the rows. So a little half circle, half circle, half circle, half circle. Keep working it in towards the center. Okay, and that creates that beautiful abstracted petal. All right, one final touch here will be a little spot of red. So I'm going to come in with my little bit brush, little touch of red here. Just go boom right there in the center. Sometimes that's just enough. Uh, sometimes we do need to follow up with a little bit of dark shadowing too. So I'm going to come back in just a few more times. Same stroke. Half circle, half circle, half circle. Just a few little shadows in that rose now. Just following back up with a little bit of that red. Just a few. All right, so we're awesome. We have our little rose done. It's all good. Now I'm going to show you the look of that little pounce effect with our, this time I'm going to use my little buddy brush. And everybody loves this because it always works. It's real easy every time. And so I'm going to come in again, little buddy here. And let's do purple. And then let's make sure we've got some white. Such a lovely sound there. All right. So we got purple, white. Blue. Purple, white, blue. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with my little buddy brush here, and I'm going to start to do this little tap thing. So, taking the end of the brush, tap, tap, tap into the purple, okay, and then tap, tap, tap around the surface of that little shape in there. And I'm going to tap all around it with that purple. And then, and you can already start to see that evolve and look like a really cute little flower, and that was so easy. And then, come in with a little bit of white and kind of lightly tap over the top of that. And even that alone is just really quite lovely. Okay, it looks like a fun little flower there. If you want to keep going, you can add a little, one more little color here, a little touch of that blue. And that kind of almost pulls it to a little bit of that hydrangea look. Brings in that little periwinkle hue. It's really awesome. All right, so again, start again on this side. We got our little purple tap, tap, tap. Just right over the surface. All right. Tap, tap, tap. Then a little bit of white. Again, tap, 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 right over the surface there. And then a little bit of that blue, just a tiny touch there. Ta -da. So beautiful. All right. Then we're going to do some awesome leaves. Okay, awesome leaves. Not just leaves, awesome leaves. All right, so we've got our green, okay? And we have our white. Little bit brush, tiniest brush we got. Do a little quick mix there. And the basic shape of doing a leaf, very easy to find, okay? Make what looks like a parentheses. Then do another one on the opposite side, little parentheses, and then just connect them. And you can vary the sizes of these. They can be really tiny and a little bit bigger. We'll do a few more here on the bottom. So again, little parentheses, little parentheses. Connect those two. Fill in. Let's do some more on this other side here.
pretty cool. I'm excited. Okay, um, let's see. Let's do feeling the love in this little place. So I'm gonna do a little heart right there. And so I'm gonna gather a little bit more of my red. I want just a touch of white so there's easy coverage. So it's kind of borderlines between red and a, just a really dark hot pink. Remember to get better control with this little guy. You wanna just do a little twist between your fingertips that'll help rotate that paint on the brush. And then I'm gonna do a little heart right here. And I love free-handed hearts that have some asymmetry to them. That's just me, but I don't really always like them to be too perfect. Hold on, superhero glasses again. Let's get this going, I gotta see what I'm doing here. Snazzy. All right. Now we're going to do a little door handle. And this is easy. This is a fun little trick. So, what I do is I take. Um, first, I take some of this. Okay. So, I'm going to take my Big Daddy brush. And I am going to push the handle of the brush. See, that guy right there, that handle. All right. I'm going to push that into the black paint, just like that. Just push straight down. And you see how it's got a little dot there on the end? This is such a cool little trick. You can use this in so many different ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a door handle first. Pretty easy. Okay, so boom, right there. Just press straight forward. Man, that is the easiest way to do a door handle. So, because if you try to paint that on, a lot of times what happens, especially if you're drinking wine, your door handle just becomes like giant. You know, you're just like, wow, this is the biggest door handle ever. But if you use this little trick and you just try to dot it on, it's perfect. It works great every time. All right, the other thing that you can do is just make a polka dot pattern. So, let's try some of that. Same thing here with just push down and push straight forward. All right, and I'm just going to make sure you kind of keep it freshly loaded. But I'm gonna have a fun little pattern going all the way across here. So, oh, one more thing, well, there's a lot of things you can do with this, but one more thing you can do here is you can actually make more of a flowering effect with this too. So, you can uh, make sure and clean it off, uh, but you can start fresh with a new color. So, for example, we'll try some red. This will be fun. Just pure red paint. Again, big daddy brush. By the way, if you want a smaller dot, then feel free to use smaller brushes. So, you can get teeny tiny little dots with tiny brushes, wooden handles, just dip right in. Uh, I'll show you that here in just a second too. So I'm gonna start big so you can see it, but I've got my red and I'm gonna press forward so it looks like I've got a little flower happening here. So this is just really fun and easy. Do a few of these here on the bottom. And then if you want to do a smaller flower, then let's look at what Little Bit can do. So that's, this is a little, oops, that's a little bit. 
and let's do some let's do some purple. Okay. So I'm gonna do just a few tiny little dots here. Okay. So that just gives you another option. So lots of fun options there. Really easy way to make little flowers and all kinds of little effects. All kinds of fun stuff happening all the way around here. All right, and then um, kind of getting to the point where we could do some optional lettering. It's always optional. You don't have to do that. Uh, if you like the look of lettering, then you can, you know, write that somewhere. We have a little bit. I've kind of gone crazy with, you know, lots of stuff happening on mine. But it looks like I could do either maybe one letter here or a little word right there. Uh, so you can kind of play with that. Or again, just nothing at all. I uh, personally love the look of a natural freehand. And a lot of people disagree with me on this because they just they get really hung up on perfection. And I know that writing is writing and words integrate into art is huge right now it's it's a very powerful message it's very popular um, and in my classes I know that women get really hung up on perfection they want their words to look like what they see you know all the professionals doing um, or the machines doing rather uh, but I think it's much more enduring endearing rather well yeah, enduring or endearing uh, to have lettering that looks like your personal hand. You know, I mean, think about what you appreciate with your kids. You wouldn't want something that their teacher, you know, where if their teacher painted the word, it wouldn't be nearly as meaningful to you. But if they actually painted the lettering, even with all of its imperfection and character and possibilities, um, that's the stuff that we love that makes us really remember who they were really makes an impression on the canvas. It makes it very, very much their personality coming through. So again, just try to ease up on yourself and have fun with it and do your own hand and just, you know, try to be free with it and be forgiving and love it just the way it is. All right. And if somebody doesn't appreciate that about your work, then you let them come talk to me because I will love it. I will. All right. So the other thing I will suggest though, now one of the things that is not that cool or not as easy to forgive is when you don't plan ahead and maybe the phrase you pick, you run out of room and you get halfway through it and so it says half of something. Uh, like maybe you're trying to say joy and you got Joe and everybody's like, who's Joe? And you're like, I don't know, I just ran out of room. Uh, so, because I personally have my own little Joy Joe, because that's my hubby's name, but you know, so that may not be your case. So you may really have to plan this through, like you may want the whole word, the whole word love, you don't want just low, you know what I'm saying. So pencil is a great friend, you want to make sure everything's dry, uh, there's some forgiveness with pencil to where... You know, you can kind of map it out, know that it fits, and then that really gives you a whole lot of confidence to know that your word fits in there. So what I'm going to do is I've got my pencil here, and I'm going to put on my glasses here so that you can really, so that I can see what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and write love. Speaking of love. Yeah, that's pretty sweet right there. And you can paint this on or you can sharpie it on. I will say that I think a lot of people prefer a paint pen or a sharpie. It's so much easier to control. And you know, I don't normally ever use sharpies in my classes, but in the video world, we can do new things. I can actually teach you a lot more about what real artists really do. Not necessarily what we're confined to during a class. So there's our beautiful word love. So much easier to do this with a Sharpie. Made that process really easy. And then the other thing that I can come back in, as long as my paint's all dry, then I can also come back in and I can firm up like black outline work this to make it 
very, a lot more precise. And you can also paint this on too, if you feel confident with that process, or paint pen. See, when we came in with those colors, and we had a little bit of some overpaint happen, and so you can come back in with your black, and you can do that little bit of touch-up work. And see how that really makes that pop a whole lot more there. And then you can also do other line work all the way around the camper as well. So, and then the other thing that I'll tell you, which is pretty awesome, is a ruler. So a ruler, and you want to make sure that your paint's dry. I'm maybe running into a little bit of some not completely dry here on my wheel, but I'm going to go ahead and lay it right down there for this first one. Steady. And so you can run that Sharpie all the way along the edge. You can also do that with your um, paintbrush. Now I created a second line and that's going to actually help me do my paint, my filled painted line, which is another way to go. So I'm going to take my Big Daddy brush here and I'm going to push into my black paint just like this. Now you want to make sure you get a nice thin line, okay, just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint into this line here. This will give me a nice base here for my camper. And I'm going to just drag this all the way across. You can also do your paintbrush all the way across the line edge of a ruler as well. That's another little trick. The main thing though that you really want to do, if you do a ruler, is just make sure that you dry it between each step. So you don't want to run your paint along the edge of the ruler and then move your ruler to a different side of your canvas because that will give you a nice big black line somewhere where you do not want it. All right. And then I'm going to come back in and do my outline work. I want a little bit of a thicker line, so I'm going to actually paint mine on here. So I'm going to be using my little buddy brush for some of the smaller areas. And then I'll actually come back in with my Big Daddy brush again. And anytime there's a really long line, I try to use Big Daddy just as much as possible. So he's a, a much um, easier brush to use with that long line edge that he has. So, and I am doing line work, so I want to see what I'm doing here. So, I've got my little buddy here. And here's I'm going to go ahead and make sure you got that thin line on the edge of the brush. This gives me a much thicker look, but you really can't get from a Sharpie, so it is kind of nice if you do want to paint some of this, you know, just whatever you feel comfortable with.
one now it's getting to be pretty I've got a curve here so sometimes these curves are easier to navigate with a smaller brush See, this is a place where, see, this is a really long line in here. So I'm actually going to come in with my Big Daddy brush this time. Make sure and check the end of your brush. Make sure, I'll see, that's not a good one. Sometimes these brushes get kind of gnarly on the end. They spread out like that, and they'll just give you fits. So you just, you do need to make sure that your brush, I'll show you. Clean, and then see, thin. There, there, yeah. uh, that'll really help. And then I'm gonna push into this black paint here. All right, nice thin line edge now. And see, that makes it much easier to control. I'm going to do a little bit of a black outline around that tail light there. some clouds and we'll probably do some fun grass in here too. Alright, so clouds are so fun. I'm going to get another clean mixing plate here. And I want to make sure that I've got plenty of white. So here we go. Maybe I can get, uh oh, I have a little, I get sometimes I don't know, I don't just clean off my paint like I'm supposed to. Right up to paint there on top. All right, that's a little better. All right, so I got my white. And then, okay, so here's what's cool. We're gonna start off with just white. Then I'm gonna have these really cool highlights in my clouds. So I'm gonna have a touch of some purple, a touch of some red, and a touch of some gold. All right, so I want to make sure I've got that nearby as well. So I've got my white, lots of white, a little bit of purple, and then I have a little bit of red, and then I have a little bit of gold. There. Okay. All right, so again, big dollop of white, uh, a little bit of purple, a little bit of red, a little bit of gold. This is going to give us a great foundation for our clouds. Then I am going to start with my Big Daddy brush. We're going to have big clouds, big fluffy clouds in our sky. I'm going to start with white. So I'm going to press back and forth here into the white. All right, this will load up my brush. And I'm going to start to make circles, painted circles on my canvas. So 
I'm going to hold my brush just like I hold a pencil. And then I'm going to kind of fan out those bristles like that. Let's do that again. Kind of push those out in little circles. Now, here's what you don't want to do. I've seen people that sit there, like sit and spin like this, and like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Don't do that. Okay. That's what you don't do. You want to hold the brush firm and then press those outside bristles into a circle. So. All right, so this is my first cloud. I've got my wipe in place here. Now, here's the cool part. While the paint's still wet, you want to work in some of those highlights. The only thing you're going to have to be kind of thoughtful about is making sure you get the right corner of your brush to match where you want the highlight to go. So think top of the brush. Okay, I'm going to do top corner. All right, and I just did a little touch of purple. So I'm working into the outer layer of the cloud. So top of the brush, and then I work in that top layer. See, see how it works? That little purple highlight in there. Wet to wet paint. That's what's important too. Uh, it, you need the wet to wet to, to get the right mix in there. And so you can just do little purple highlights to start. And then now I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to wipe that off a little bit. Now a little tiny touch of the red top corner. Okay, and that'll make sure that I put my highlight in the outer part of that cloud. All right, again, I just kind of wiped it off gently. And then now I'm going to go in for a little touch of that gold top corner of the brush. And I'm going to push that into one of those circles. All right, and then I can kind of um, come back in. I've got all my highlights done. Then I can come back in and just grab a little bit more white, hold that brush a little bit more out to the side, just kind of lightly feather in any parts here that feel like they're, you know, a little bit too um, contrasting or not blended softly so we can Come back in with that soft white and just kind of lightly feather that in a little bit. So lay that brush over on the side. Just kind of lightly feather in white, that mix of wet white paint in with that color. All right, so we're gonna do this again on this side. All right, so again, more white paint. Just kind of push that into a circle. Push that into a circle, push into a circle, push into a circle. Okay. And then we want a little bit of color happening in there. So we just love little rainbows in our clouds. It's awesome. All right, so top of the brush, top of the cloud. Okay, we'll highlight there. I will paint this time, top of the brush, top of the cloud. Okay. Now this may get tricky on you, can see I just put bottom of the brush, bottom of the cloud. Okay. All right, then I'm gonna feather in some of that white again. Lightly feather it in. Now, I want some little baby clouds in my sky, so little, uh, sorry, uh, Big Daddy's probably gonna be a little bit big, so now I'm gonna go in for my little buddy. Little buddy's the guy I want now, because I want a little baby cloud right over here at the top. And so, little buddy, start, it's the exact same process, but just a smaller brush this time. So I'm gonna do little buddy, and I'm just gonna make little baby clouds in here. And you may like the look of just little baby clouds a lot more than the bigger ones anyway. Okay. And then you can create the same little highlights that I just did. Alright, so I'm going to do a little bit of purple. 
red. And then remember to kind of feather back in the white. these little babies and off here to the side just push those little circles out got little cotton balls in the sky let's do another one right over here just for fun soft feathering over the top so I'm gonna grab a little more of that white just kind of lightly go over the top here flat side of the brush going to do some awesome grass coming in from the bottom. Okay. Alright, so I want green and white. Green and white. And sometimes it's helpful to grab a little bit of yellow in here too. It helps to show up over the top. So, okay, so I've got green, white, yellow. Let's get this going. I've got my little buddy brush. All right, and this is just very fun, childlike grass. So I'm gonna, I've got little buddy all loaded up with that mix. Again, that was green, white, and yellow. And I'm going to come up here from the base. I'm going to hold that brush like a pencil and I'm just going to pull straight up like that. So pull straight up and just make these real pretty little blades of grass here. And I'll do this all. So again, start at the base. Make sure that paintbrush is very loaded up with paint, lots of paint. Green, white, and yellow. Make it nice and light so it's really contrasting. Start from the base, pull straight up, and then lift off with a light hand. bit of this kind of come up over the top of that little tire. Kind of fill in here at the bottom. There's a few little 
edges. Cool. All right, and I, I'm just seeing one little area where I just personally want a little light highlight. Sometimes you gotta learn when to walk away, but I just can't stop myself. Uh, white and a little bit. Twirl it in here, and then I'm feeling it. Just a tiny little white highlight, just right in there. Feeling a few more, just. Do a few more around the base here. Still got a little red. Oops, I'm getting all kinds of colors. Hold on. Let's go back to white. And then the good news, if you ever come in and do this, you're like, mm, I'm not feeling it, not so much, and you change your mind. At least with the black, anyway, it's real easy to come back in and kind of make those highlights a little bit softer, or come back in and do some corrections, because there's no mixing on black, so. You know, any black just kind of easily mixes in over the top. Yeah, there's a lot of little details like this you can add. Like a little bit here on the leaves sometimes is nice. Just little tiny white dashes. Kind of helps things pop. Or just a few of these on each flag. Just a little touch of white. Just one little stroke there. Just kind of a nice little look. Alright. This is looking pretty awesome. Like, I'm about to the point where I think I can walk away from it and be done. All right, so when I get to that final stage, of course, I am going to sign my masterpiece, which you're more than welcome to do with a Sharpie. Once it's all dry, you can come back in and uh, do your little Sharpie signature, or you can hand paint it in with your little bit brush here. And a little bit of any contrasting paint that shows up over the top here. And just do a tiny little signature. I'm gonna do tipsy. So, this is so exciting. We are done with our beautiful little camper. And remember that we have these little beauties for you on our website, tipsyartist.com. So this is what we started with. These are instant digital downloadable templates. We recommend cardstock again. And then you can trace them. I mean, I'm sorry, cut them out and trace them. Put them on your canvas and then that makes this really easy to do too. 11 by 14 canvas. All the supplies are in our supply list down in the description, so check that out. Also, please subscribe to us and remember that you are fabulous each and every day. And we cannot wait to see you again next week when we will have another new video. But cheers, have a fantastic week, and we look forward to seeing you next time.